Hey everyone, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts, number 402, Lightning Speed Circuits. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me today. And uh, this is a pretty short one, uh, more of a quality of life thing, but it is some really good quality of life. Uh, I, I didn't really think it would be because I don't use circuits that much, uh, but it's actually really fantastic. So uh, the first big one here is Radar Transmission Network. So basically Corex starts this off and just goes in by saying that it might be useful sometimes to send circuit signals over long distances however he personally never used it for anything but when we were play testing a while ago boss kid insisted that we include uh, circuit wires into our rail blueprints because we never know when it might be useful and this is pretty common right like i do the same thing my rail blueprints have uh, circuit wires on them even though i really never use them uh, but there are use cases like on the 2.0 sim play through i'm doing with will uh, they transport uh, circuits quite a bit of circuit info over the wires from outposts uh, so it definitely can be useful and i have used it from time to time but at least for me it's a pretty an uh, edge case and Cobrex continues to say that you know he felt uneasy about it because it goes against the coding principle of write it when you need it as it adds blow for something which might not even be useful later but he understands that if it actually becomes needed it would be very hard to fix later and that's basically the reason for doing it right if you ever needed it and you didn't have them on the wires that's a huge pain to be running wires down all of your rails so this is how the rail system looked a lot of you probably find this familiar but to avoid this dilemma they add a long request a feature of wireless circuit transmission using radars which i think is fantastic there is a uh, feature, I mean, there's basically this in the space exploration mod from Arendelle. Uh, it's not like the vanilla radars, but it is basically specific like circuit network uh, transmitters that you can trans uh, excuse me, transport circuit information between like space platforms and the planet and different planets. And this basically does the same thing. So there are a lot of ways to do it, but we wanted to keep it simple. Basically, it now it will work in a way where uh, there's just a single radar channel for each surface still separated between red and green. This means you don't have to configure anything. You just connect the wire and you're ready to go. If the radar loses power. The circuit connection is severed. So uh, this is super, super cool. I really like this. There are a few things that I wonder about and, and maybe a little concerned about. Uh, so first off, though, like generally, this is really great. I love this because you could just have radars at your outpost you know, radar in your main base, and as long as they're powered, you can transmit circuit signals between them with no wires. And uh, it does mention that circuit, that, that each surface has a channel, so I would imagine you can transfer between uh, between services as well, so from like Novice to Volcanus and, and other stuff. But my concern and question kind of lies with the fact where it just says there's one channel, red and green. So... I, I guess, I mean, I, I guess maybe this wouldn't be a problem very often, but like, even if you're just on one surface, you know, if you have like radars in different outposts transmitting things and maybe like different, uh, just doing different things, you, you can't really have like, you can't separate them, right? It's just all going to be culminated into like everything that's green on a radar on, on a green signal is just going to be there. Everything that's on a red is just going to be there. Uh, whereas like, you know, if you were using wires and combinators, sure, it's only red and green, but you could like bring it in from two separate outposts completely separately because you would just never connect the wire networks, if that if that makes sense. So I don't think it's really going to be that big of an issue because you can kind of separate that with combinators anyway. Uh, so I think maybe maybe I'm just overthinking things. <laughs> I certainly don't know the circuit network that great, but overall, this is fantastic. And then cutting wires this is also another uh, small but very nice quality of life. Uh, basically, you know, Corex got annoyed again because it, it does become a problem when you uh, build a setup and then realize you need to move the combinators. And when you move them, of course, you have to rebuild all the wires uh, because it, it doesn't uh, keep them. So basically, it became so annoying that he just had to add this quality of life feature uh, to make it so the blueprint remembers the outside circuit wire connections and tries to re reconnect them if possible, uh, but only when using cut paste, uh, not not in other instances. So he basically says to minimize problems, these connections are only remembered when using the cut tool and are not and cannot ever be transferred into the blueprint library, a blueprint export string, right? So that's kind of the limitation of it, which I don't think is an issue. I mean, wires are already put into blueprints, like, right, if you, if you blueprint 
something with wires and then place it the wires are just put down anyway so this seems like kind of an edge case maybe but but generally just uh cutting and then moving the thing and stuff keeps wires if possible which which is really really nice i love that uh, because i have been slightly annoyed by that as well and i'm sure many of you have so that's the kind of uh main like really new quality of life stuff i mean this is new too but it's a little more like behind the scenes type of thing that a lot of people will not never even run into <laughs> having this be a thing. But uh, this one is by our seating, of course, so we know it's an optimization. Uh, our seating, I think, does other things as well, but our seating is the king of optimization, at least as far as I know. And uh, basically just starts off by saying there's no such thing as too fast in Factorio. From the first machine place, everything is about making them faster. Faster belt, inserters, assemblers, machine, uh, similar machines, and speed modules to make them even faster, but that's not enough. Next, you add beacons with speed modules, and then another and another. But it's still not enough, of course, right? More faster. we got to go faster. Factory must grow. It's uh, never enough. Mods push the numbers even more and run into limits of what the engine itself can handle. And he provides three different posts. You can check those out if you want. They're just like forum uh, kind of like bug or uh, just issue posts about hitting the limit of like one craft per tick which is 60 per second by the way that's still insanely fast <laughs> and every time we or uh, he said roughly the same thing crazy numbers get crazy results unless base game runs into this we don't want to make crafting logic more complex fragile just don't do that one craft per tick is fast enough which in most cases almost all cases for most people it certainly will be but then space age happened with its legendary speed modules and all of a sudden it's base game problems and uh, it was time for me to eat crow and find a solution. Handle the edge case, but don't make the main case slower. So conceptually, it's a simple fix. Loop the crafting logic if it needs to run faster than one craft per tick, uh, but things are never that simple code-wise. Years of optimization and features around assembling machines uh, meant any changes done had a high likelihood of breaking something if I didn't fully understand what each line of code was supposed to be doing and what it was actually doing. So I like the fact our statement took a very like measured uh, approach to this and didn't just I mean obviously I'm sure this is kind of procedure uh, for for any process in, in the development but uh, then you know he took time and actually read through the code and learned it which took about two days or maybe not learned it but like read through saw what everything was doing in the sim assembling machine code what everything should look like uh, rearranging writing comments explaining parts of myself and then uh, to make the changes so the final changes to make everything function correctly took about one hour to write which is actually really uh really quite funny to me that it's just basically that simple once you actually understand uh once you understood kind of where all the code was supposed to be what it looked like etc and it worked correctly the first time that's not supposed to happen <laughs> and left me with doubts several extra tests later and asking boss kid to try to break it it was confirmed to be correct so yeah i mean i feel like that's maybe one in a million that it actually works the first time and, and nothing else breaks and the two days of analyzing and understanding the existing code paid off and you can see this thing is cranking like holy crap these are a uh, stack these are like the stack inserters like the actual stacking ones you can see it's stacking on the belt and this is the green belt and it looks like it's probably almost fully compressing it maybe you need like one more inserter uh, this one's fully compressed, so I, I guess I would imagine this one is too, but this thing is just cranking. The, the bars are like so broken, and this definitely becomes an issue too, uh, or maybe not an issue, but just becomes a thing even before the crafting speed uh, fix or, or change, and, and even like with mining productivity and such, uh, because the, the bars just kind of break at, at this point. Uh, <laughs> this is something Will and I have talked about. I think at some point, like, it, maybe I think it's maybe a design choice or a limitation, but it would be super cool, I think, to, you know, after a certain speed, like after the bar just can't work correctly, to just replace it, uh, or in addition to it, at least have some better indicator of like, you know, like, like maybe just a thing that just says like X amount per minute or per second craft or something under this to kind of <laughs> represent it or something, because obviously you can't tell anything from this. Uh, it's just completely broken. But I mean, this has always been a, a thing. It is quite funny. Uh, but that's that's fantastic. So you shouldn't really be hitting limits anymore. Uh, you know, you can legendary place a legendary forge uh, with legendary speed modules, speed beacons in it. And you're just you're not going to have an issue. Basically, your issue is going to be uh, filling the belts and how fast you can get the materials out as basically the final note here. This one is 2500% speed completing 4.33 crafts per tick, which is insane. They're 60 ticks in a second. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's crazy. So the underlying issue has been fixed, and as he says, as far as you can tell, the only limit on how fast you can craft now is how many ingredients the machine has and how much space is available in the input slots, right? So then that's good, because then the limitation doesn't become a gain limitation necessarily. It becomes like a U limitation. I mean, obviously to a degree, it's maybe a gain limitation, like just there's not enough room for inserters, but like uh, still at that point, you can't really do anything. So that's fantastic. Now there is a little Easter egg in here. Uh, I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, and I didn't even notice it until someone pointed out. It, it's very hard to notice, uh, and at first glance, it may seem like it is part of the foundry. Uh, but if we zoom all the way in here, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more. Uh, you can see what is this? Okay, this is like a little like excavator backhoe arm here, and. There's been a lot of speculation that this is some sort of new power, like mech suit or something. What I think it is, actually, now that I look at it, I, I read the Friday Facts initially on my phone, so I couldn't really tell. Uh, but honestly, this is like... So this is, I would say this is either something that connects onto a power armor, or this is actually like a hand type thing, and this is the arm, and, and, and it's more like... It's actually like part of like the arm and hand of just like a huge mech suit because so here's the thing right initially you would think this is part of the foundry but a uh, this was not part of the foundry if we go over to this Friday facts and sorry we're so zoomed in here but you can see there's nothing that even remotely looks like this and this is the part of the foundry that that we're looking at right here so if we look th there's nothing like that here so either they added this later right I mean this is just non-existent. So either they added this later, which is possible for sure, and we're just all like overthinking everything. Uh, but I don't really think so, uh, because also it doesn't move with the forge, right? Like you can see, like, look at this. Oh, well, that's the inserter. But you can see like at the speed these things are moving, and this is out of sync first off, but also what gives it away to me is if you've played Factorio enough and paid attention, this is basically the, the idle sway or movement or animation of the player right like if you just like if you look at your factorial right now if you never notice just let your character stand there and he does it like, like the character kind of just moves like kind of just sways back and forth you know every once in a while like this and that's the idle animation of that so this is something else and i don't know if this was intentional i would love to hear your thoughts on this your theories i definitely think it's something to do with like either it's attached to a power armor suit some sort of robotic arm thing uh, or it actually is the arm and hand of the suit itself of just like a huge mech suit like kind of more like the uh like an iron man uh mo the, the movie iron man like the very first suit he builds to like get out of captivity like just this massive like you know, Goliath of a suit type of thing, because this definitely looks more beefy than the, even like the Power Armor Mark II that we have now. Uh, so I'm just really curious what this is, what you what you guys think it might be. Again, I don't know if this was intentional or not by the devs. If it was uh, very, very sneaky, I would have missed this if if I didn't read people's comments, because uh, initially you, you you just maybe don't see it, and even if you do, you think it's part of the Forge maybe, uh, but unless they added it, it's definitely not. Uh, but there we go. That's a Friday fact. So a nice little fun kind of Easter egg teaser there. And overall, I, I really love these changes. I didn't really mean to go out of full screen, but I really love these changes. And I I think that this is just, I mean, the, the, it, it's quality of life, but like at least we're not, we know we're not going to hit a craft speed limit now. And then just, you know, a little easier to move circuits, cut and paste them. The radar transmission is fantastic. I love this so much, uh, you know, not having to worry about running wires all over the place through your rails and stuff. Uh, I think it kind of looked nice, honestly, but uh, just having it this way is good as well. And being able to transmit uh, signals between uh, planets because planets are services as far as I'm aware. So there's that. As always, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really look forward to seeing what we have next week. If you are excited about these changes and stuff, definitely uh, feel free to leave a like on the video. If you're new, uh, welcome. And uh, feel free to subscribe if you aren't already to keep up with all future content. And uh, I would, uh, again, love to hear your thoughts on this and the little Easter egg that down here with that arm. Uh, but until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.